Kentucky. Welcome to the June 15th, 2016 meeting of the Milton School Committee. Uh, as is our tradition, if would you join me in pledging allegiance to our flag and our country? Pledge allegiance to the flag the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would, I would like for you to join me in a moment of silence for uh, the individuals that lost their lives in the senseless violence in Orlando. Thank you. A few changes to the agenda. Um, under superintendent's report, uh, we're adding a new D, which is release schedule for park and MCAS data. So that becomes D, happenings becomes E. Under the chair's report, um, under item C, that should read athletic director and director of K-12 physical education slash health screening committees, plural. And uh, we are deleting item eight. We won't do any approval of minutes this meeting. Any other changes? <clears throat> Great. Uh, Maura, do we have anyone for citizen speak? Okay. Uh, superint Assistant Superintendent Sheehan is um, handling the superintendent responsibilities. So. Assistant Superintendent Sheehan, Superintendent's Thank Report. Thank you, Chairman Walker. Um, Dr. Glenn Pavlicek is going to um, share the Superintendent's Report and uh, begin, I think, with some introductions. Right, we'd like to bring up um, Coach Jamian and Coach Shaw and some of the members of their teams who have had amazing success this year to speak a little about what's happened. No. Yeah, I can sit there if you want. Okay. Coach Jamie, start since you're on the end. I'll start. Hello, Foley. Hi. We had a great spring season. Foley uh, here, we'll start off with, uh, was fourth in the Division Three meet, was part of the full body one relay team that uh, set the record in Division Three. We were third in the All State meet, running our uh, second leg, and we were fourth in the New England meet. But it was also part of the full by two team that went to New York for the national meet, national high school meet, which was incredibly exciting. And I want to thank actually the town of Milton because I think these guys have an experience they'll never forget. Going down there, seeing the talent that was there competing against the best in the country was fabulous. It was incredible. Kobe's a junior uh, co-captain captain of the football team, and just a wonderful, wonderful young man. Mm -hmm. I enjoy coaching Kobe every time he stepped on the track since he was a freshman. He's a great kid. Mm -hmm. uh, Derek is, Perkins is on his way, but he's late as usual. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ludwig was also going to be here. He's uh, watching his younger sister, who I said, bring here. We'll have fun. <laughs> but yeah. mom and dad wouldn't let it. Now, Mr. Charles. Um, there's not a lot of things I can say. We actually just came back from the Herald, and we were filling out the bio sheet that goes along with this picture. And I think we ran out of room <laughs> for the amount of accomplishments. We'll start from indoors, where he was the second freshman in the country in the dash, and competed in the 4 by 2 team in the National League. Again, a wonderful experience. And then if I go through all the litany of the spring, it's just been incredible. We'll start with being the freshman sophomore champion, the 100 meter the Division Three 100-meter champion, and third in the high jump. The All-State champion is a freshman in the 100-meter and third in the high jump. And when I say third in the high jump, you see how tall he is. <laughs> uh, the high jump, 6'6", six, six, he cleared. And I yelled over to him that, how does it feel to be the biggest midget ever to complete? <laughs> It was incredible. When you look at him and you look at the bar at 6'6", that he cleared 6'6". It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the uh, New England meet. He was uh, fourth in the porn rain the other day. And he's three, he was three-tenths off the national qualifying. And 
I think he would have got it last weekend, but the weather was just horrible. Mm -hmm. So it was a tremendous season. Um, and again, a young man that I come here every day and just amazed how wonderful he is. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a gift to us. Uh, appreciate everything that they've done and you've done for us. Thank you. Nice. been another historic season for the girls. Um, it started off with the, the Division Three meet. We had 24 girls qualified for the Division Three meet. Um, we qualified a girl in every event except for the pole vault, which is the one event we don't um, actually compete in at Milton. Um, and that's important to me to have 24 girls qualify because that shows how great of a team we are. Uh, we had 61 girls on the team, so almost half the team actually qualified for the Division Three meet. Um, we had five division champions. Uh, Abby Jean Baptiste won the 100. Uh, Colette O'Leary won the 800, broke the meet record. Uh, Elise O'Leary was the champion, the division champion in the 400 and the 400 hurdles as a freshman. Uh, and then our four by 100 meter relay team of Abby Jean Baptiste, Athena Pierre, Paula Charles, and Alexis Daly were also the uh, division three four by one champs. We had to score 111 points to win the meet. Um, the runner-up team scored 103. Usually you can win that meet with, you know, 70 points. Um, but we had to actually score 111, which is a lot to think about, um, considering there's only 17 events. Um, after that, we went on to have uh, a, just a crazy, fun, memorable day at the All-State meet. Uh, that's when all the division champions come together. There are six different divisions, or no, eight different divisions in the state. Um, and um, we, we ended up winning the meet in a tie with Tewksbury. Uh, and it took the final two relays to really seal the deal for us when we came in second in the state in the four by one. Uh, this again with Abby Jean Baptiste, Athena Pierre, uh, Paula Charles, and this time Julia Williams, also a freshman. And then the four by four team won the meet. They are the all-state champions. You can take any division, any school in the state. They are the best four by four team. Uh, and they won it in the slow heat. Uh, so they had to, they were nine seconds ahead of their closest competitor in their heat. Um, and then the fast heat went and ran after them. Uh, and you can imagine what it was like for the fast heat to watch us run 354. And then they had to start thinking in their head, doing some math, how fast they had to run to beat us. Uh, and uh, in the fast heat, the best team ran 355, uh, just one second shy. Um, so, uh, so lucky to have the, the all-state champions in the 4x4, which was Colette O'Leary, Elise O'Leary, Ali Balash, uh, and Josie Cousineau. Um, just a really special treat and honor to kind of cap the meet and the season off with a tie for the win um, and you know, an all-state championship relay team. And then we did go to one more meet after that at New England's. Um, which was another special day because there were only three relay events competed, the 4x8, the 4x1, and the 4x4, and we medaled in all three. So if you can imagine, the top six medal. Uh, and um, so out of all of New England, uh, all three of our relay teams were among the top six in New England. Uh, the 4x1 was in fifth place, um, again with Abby, Athena, uh, uh, Jalia this time, and Alexis. Uh, the same 4x4 four four team finished fourth in New England, and then our 4x8 team uh, finished as New England champs, which was Colette O'Leary, Elise O'Leary, Bridget Mitchell, and Ali Balash. And they again did that out of the slow heat. Um, because we were being strategic and trying to score points at the bigger meets, we didn't always put our best relay team together. We put our best team together to win the meet. Um, but then at the New England, uh, we put our best 4x8 together, and um, we won that at the time of 9-11. Second place was 9-13. So you can imagine over the course of nine minutes watching the seconds tick and trying to see what's going to happen in that fast heat. Um, and what I, you know, I really like about the New England meet was they were all relays, which means it took a lot of kids, which means you have a great team. Uh, and that's, you know, for me at the end of the day, it's, you know, providing a great team environment for the kids. And so it's always nice when we can get them all included on these big accomplishments. Um, and so needless to say, uh, very special, wonderful, historic year for the kids and uh, they deserve every bit of credit they get. They earned it.
Coach, can you introduce the girls that are here? So I have uh, Grace Dwyer, Bridget Mitchell, Ella Afanado, Elisa Leary, Moray Danbrook, one of our captains, Ali Balash, one of our captains, and Josie Cousineau. Dr. Donahue. So, um, how do you keep ending up in the slow heat? That's my yeah. question. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, um, we have a lot of depth in our team. Okay. And so, we can put together relays that will score in the big meets without having to use our best runners in the relay. And since you can score in individual events and relay events, but you can only do three events, so we try to use spread our talent in such a way that we can maximize our opportunity to score points to win the team title. Um, and we, you know, we put the team first, so we kind of focus on what's it going to take to get the team to win the meet uh, and represent Milton you know, on that stage. Uh, and, but then as the meets go up into more difficult competition, we have to modify. Uh, and so as you can see, we scored 111 points at the divisional meet, but only 36 at the all-state meet. Both good enough for a win, um, but you really gotta, you know, play the little chess match there with that. But then in New England, uh, by the time you're there, you gotta put all your aces in and go for it. <laughs> Is that I just wanna congratulate um, both teams, all the um, runners this year. I think track is a wonderful sport. Obviously, you have some absolutely wonderful superstars, but it's a very inclusive sport that many um, students participate in. All three of my children ran, run, ran track, and I think it's a wonderful opportunity for students, and I congratulate you all. For, for all of your efforts and for your um, excellence on the, and the team mm -hmm. effort. Ms. Varela? Yep. Um, I just want to thank you uh, for coming in again. I know that you were here earlier um, in the season. And um, I just want to thank you, uh, much like uh, the football team, which I know you're a part of that too. Um, but um, just like the overall spirit in town, um, not only at the high school as a whole, but um, like I say, in the town, um, I only I have a middle schooler, and you know you're at soccer games on the weekend and baseball games on the weekend, and the chit chat is like, how's did you hear about the track team and how's it did and blah blah blah, and it just it just gives like an overall excitement and pride to the town. Um, so I want to thank you for for that as well because it it's nice to just to bring another layer of something to be proud about um, being from Milton when you have stellar boys and girls track team. And uh, I just think it's exciting that so many of you are young and will be with us. Uh, so it's only gonna get better. I'm sure we'll see you again in the fall uh, to report back on even a better stellar fall season. So congratulations and thank you very much. Can you say one thing? Yeah. Uh, going to the indoor national meet, hearing Milton High School often over the loudspeaker. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Tom's, but it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're there, California kids, Oregon kids, Florida kids. And you heard Milton High School over that loudspeaker so often. It was, it was an incredible thing. That's great. That's great. So I, I echo what you're saying. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Bagley-Jones. Just ditto what everybody else said. <laughs> I didn't say it any better. So impressive. Yeah. That's all good stuff. We're, we're all very, very proud of you. And at such a young age, to be able to say, I'm competing not only am I competing at a level where uh, I'm competing at a state level or a national level, but I'm one of the best at the state level and at the national level. That must feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. Um, there is a relationship, as you've learned, between hard work and results, and uh, you've mastered that. So congratulations. We're really, really proud of you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> One of the best financial literacy programs in the country. <laughs> Milton, en Milton enjoys a, a, a wonderful relationship with the Blue Hills Bank on financial literacy program. And with us tonight is community relations manager, Julie Beckham, who has been instrumental in bringing this into the school system. And so we wanted to invite her in to talk a little bit about the partnership. I'm just going to... I'm just going to... 
Well, thank you for having me. I feel like I feel like running track now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm inspired. You, um, you can sit too they, on. You, you want me to sit? sit? Yeah, yeah. Like, whatever you're comfortable with. But usually they say My fits on, so I should probably. You want whatever not. you want. But <laughs> you don't have to do a kick line if you don't want to. Well, thank you for having me. Um, again, my name is Julie Beckham. I'm the community relations manager for Blue Hills Bank. And I also run their financial literacy programs for the Blue Hills Bank Charitable Foundation. So um, I'd love for you uh, all to ask me any questions that you have about our programs. But first, I'd just like to explain a little bit about them since I have a captive audience. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we started, Blue Hills Bank started the financial literacy program when it um, initiated the Blue Hills Bank Charitable Foundation back in 2011. And since then, we have reached more than 43,000 students through our financial literacy programs. The first program is Miss Money in the Coins, which is a 35-minute original interactive musical that teaches children in grades K through five the lessons of saving, sharing, and spending money. It has been wildly successful and has recently won awards for being innovative and inventive and educational. So I'm very proud of Miss Money in the Coins. It's been going strong for four and a half years and um, we've just completed our, well actually we will complete our 259th performance tomorrow. So that is um, the longest running musical on financial literacy <laughs> in the world. Um, so th th that's our, our flagship program. And that was uh, so successful that we started um, a game show for middle school students called Miss Money's Give Me Some Credit, which teaches middle school students the lessons of interest and debt and how interest can work for you when you save your money and how it can work against you when you use a credit card and you don't have the money to pay your bill. So that's a, a middle school program that involves a spinning wheel and a classroom of kids. It reaches a smaller audience uh, per show than the, than the elementary school, but still as, as impactful. Um, we've recently partnered with, for the last three years, we've partnered with an organization called EverFi, which has brought us an opportunity to go into high schools, such as Milton High this year. The sophomore class was offered EverFi's um, Miss Money's Virtual Reality Check. And that is a nine module um, lesson, 45 minutes for each module, to go online for every student the sophomore class was offered to register, go online and learn about renting versus owning, how to file for your taxes, how to apply for financial aid for college, um, what does it mean to have insurance and what kind of insurance do I need. So basically the students that, that take advantage of these modules come out more financially educated than the average American. <laughs> yes. And it's so yes. beneficial to come out as an 18 year old and have all of those skills in your back pocket. Uh, most recently we, I guess you could, somebody said the phrase the other day, we're K through gray because we have started a financial literacy uh, workshop for senior citizens and it's uh, consumer protection for seniors. And so we're going out into the community and we'll be at the Milton Council on Aging later this year to educate seniors on the, uh, the, the scams and the vulnerable factors that, um, that their age group bring to predators. And so we're out in the community, not only in the, the uh, K through 12 schools, but also in the community, educating the community as a whole. Um, Blue Hills Bank and the Blue Hills Bank Charitable Foundation thinks it's extremely important to educate its consumers. Um, the more education a consumer has coming into the bank, the more well-informed, the better choices, and uh, the happier the consumer is. So uh, we're, you know, I, I say one of my favorite things to do is giving me this platform, giving this microphone about how great my job is, how great Blue Hills Bank and the Blue Hills Bank Charitable Foundation is to this community um, through not only financial education, through bank sponsorships, and through the Blue Hills Bank Charitable Foundation that has given almost $40,000 in grants to Milton Public Schools since uh, 2011 just for education. Um, all four Milton Elementary Schools received a grant last year to help with the Science and Scientists, um, Science for Sciences program. Mm -hmm. Our flagship um, signature grant that we gave when we opened the branch in Milton went to the Milton Foundation for Education. So the bank is in the community, in the schools, and happy to be here. So as am I, happy to be presenting <laughs> to the school committee. So thank you for having me. And if you have any questions about the program, I'm here to answer them for you. 
Ms. Bagley-Jones. It sounds wonderful, and I have to be honest, I really didn't know much about this at all until you explained it, so I'm glad that you came. Um, it sounds great. I had two questions for you. Um, it seemed like you went from high school to the seniors. Yes. And I'm wondering about the groups in the middle. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. There are groups in the middle. It seems as though that the urgency to educate seniors, it's a particularly vulnerable group. Yeah. Um, oh, and so that. many factors lead yep. to that vulnerability. Um, so yes, is uh, family education and general adult education on the <clears throat> forefront of our agenda for financial literacy, yes. Okay. Um, but it would just, it, we needed to make an impact um, more immediately for a particularly vulnerable group. And Mike, if I can follow up, my question was more thinking about college students and grappling with loans and figuring out interest and how they're gonna pay and things like that. And then I could call you for a private consult <laughs> yes. for myself. Yeah, that would know, be great. It is, it is such a challenge and, um, and it, it is one that the entire family has to get involved in. And uh, I don't think, you know, it, there's a, a panacea that is going to change, the, you know, the, the dynamic and the cost and uh, the commitment. Mm -hmm. um, yet, uh, you know, th there's, it's just about education. And I think that our high school program um, has given the, you know, some of the sophomores who've been able to take advantage of it this year um, a little bit of insight mm -hmm. and has maybe opened their eyes to the fact that it isn't just a decision that they can make unilaterally at the mm -hmm. young age of 17, that they're getting into a big financial commitment with their families and one that will follow them around if they make certain choices. Mm -hmm. so, um, so in the module of applying for financial aid, you do get that information. Um, and again, as, as a bank and the Charitable Foundation, we're here to provide the information. And then it's up to the families and the parents to open their eyes and continue their education. And I, I understand why one would not want to because <laughs> it looks a little intimidating. But again, it is it's the education that's the mm -hmm. most important. And, um, and opening those first doors mm -hmm. so that parents and families can really get the knowledge that they need. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ms. Varela. Um, so I want to thank Julie for coming. I have to say that I, I, I was the, the member of the school committee who asked if you could come because, number one, my daughter Grace uh, is a sophomore and um, w went, through the pro you know, went through the program this year and would talk to me about it. And I didn't, I, even I, like Kristen, I knew, I knew about Miss Money at the elementary level, but I wasn't aware that it, it, was, it had expanded like it was. And um, I just think it's, I think it's fabulous because, um, you know, I'm very proud of Milton Public Schools, and I think it gives a stellar education, but they may know how to do, like, you know, uh, AP algebra, but maybe not, yeah, know about loans and investments and all the, all the basic stuff um, that's so valuable to them for just everyday living. So I think it's, I think it's a great program um, from what I hear about it. But I wanted to ask, with the musical and then the um, talk show, and now you like the interactive modules, but um, are, do you work with outside people to put these educational programs together? How, how did you come up with it? Do you work with educational consultants, or how, how did that come about? Um, I, you know, I've become financially certified in financial education um, during this process, mm -hmm. and um, and armed myself with again a lot of knowledge. And speaking to a school committee who values education, I think that uh, the, you know you can receive that well. Um, but I, you know, I've mostly collaborated with those in the community and in Massachusetts who have been on the forefront of making financial education a priority in schools. Um, Massachusetts is really um, far behind as far as mandating financial literacy in public schools as, as far as the rest of the country goes. Um, there are bills in the Senate that have come forth and not gone through. And, and part of me understands why mandate another thing that has to be funded and there's no funding. So what's, you know, how, how does one grapple with that? And as a school committee, you know way more about that than I do. Um, but as a nation, we have a problem. And the problem is, is that we're not teaching our children about money and being fin uh, fiscally responsible. So um, unfortunately, that sometimes falls on parents. And then if the parents 
don't take care of it, it falls on the schools. So, and, and if the schools can't, ha can't handle it, then I guess it falls on the banks to support it. <laughs> so it's, um, it's a, a, a trickle down effect sometimes. And um, it is very important. And I, the, the, the bank and the charitable foundation are here to offer a program, you know, like consider it, you know, an offering. And if it can be used, wonderful. And if we're able to continue offering it, great. And if the school loves it and the students think it's valuable and the administration and the teachers can support it, all the better. Um, but we're here to support whatever the needs are of the schools. And, and we, we think it's financial education is important. So these are the things that we have offered and hope to continue to offer in some way or another. Now, our priorities, um, like a school committee member mentioned, may shift to family members, less on high school, maybe less on middle school, more on the family, maybe more on college age students. We'll see where that goes. Um, but I will definitely inform you of the progress so that you are as well informed as you need to be so that you can support it or talk about it and, and get whoever it is in the community or in the schools on board. Great. Ms. Um, I, I just want to say I did a lot of, before I was elected to the school committee, I sat on the Milton Foundation for Education for nine years and um, really appreciated your support of the foundation through your um, charitable trust. And the work you do with the grants for the teachers is um, well appreciated. Your hometown hero recognition through your calendar is all wonderful stuff. Blue Hills Bank is such a wonderful community organization. And I just wanted to express mm -hmm. my gratitude. The grant programs that you supported for teachers is nothing like putting tools and resources in the hands of teachers and for students. And so I thank you so much for that. It was very much appreciated. Thank you. Well, we're really fortunate to have this partnership on so many levels. And uh, just a little history. There was a member that served um, with me before some of my colleagues, um, Mary Kelly, who has one of the records for length of tenure for school committee members. She served for 12 years. And for the time that we were together, she was talking about financial literacy and how important it is that our students get that knowledge and that understanding. So um, I'm really happy, and I think she would be really happy that that day has finally come. Um, do you know how many students we were able to reach this year? It could be a question for you or for Assistant Superintendent Sheehan. Sure, through, um, through our program. Um, I think all of the 10th grade uh, registered. About 48% participated in at least one module. Um, and I think about 15% did four to eight modules. And as of last week, 12 people were certified. So, Great. so you know, we steps and slow. I think that, again, schools have a lot on their plates and students mm -hmm. have a lot on their plates. Yeah. Um, but the fact that half of the uh, sophomores got a taste of what it meant to learn a little bit more about personal finance is, um, is it can be measured as successful. Um, so we will, you know, we will keep plugging and seeing um, what kind of programs we're able to offer as the years go on. And again, I will uh, communicate that to you all um, so that you know, you know what we're offering and, and how to uh, support it if you'd like to. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, and maybe this is for both Julie and um, Janet. So does, um, does the Miss Money's musical go like to the element, to each elementary? Oh yes, and so I'm sorry, yeah. I, I talk so much about Miss Money and the coins. Yeah. That I did. So that was just the high school program that I was just talking about with those numbers and um, you know, half the, the sophomore class. Right. Um, Miss Money and the coins went to every Milton elementary school this year. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we, we, you know, we were seen by, I believe sometimes there's a field trip for one of the grades mm -hmm. or, you know, some, some grades aren't there for that particular day. But I believe, um, I would say most, if not all K through five Milton elementary school students were able to see Miss Money in the Coins and, and sing the tune for financial literacy. <laughs> and what about the talk show? Uh, the, Miss Money's give me some credit was not in Milton element, um, Milton middle school this year, the mm -hmm. Pierce. Um, and I think that's, really because our, you know, the focus of, of the financial literacy, so not by any fault of anybody not mm -hmm. booking it, it's just that there are lots of programs right. and um, we're, you know, we're not able to um, kind of advertise and promote all of them as equally mm -hmm. at given times. So, mm -hmm. um, and different schools have different things going on. Okay. 
Assistant Superintendent Sheehan. Um, judging by um, Member Varela's question, I'm wondering if everyone understands that we're speaking to Miss Money herself. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, oh, I, I didn't know, know that. that. I didn't so know when that. you talk about the musical yeah. and, yeah. and, and, yeah. and having a partnership with some kind of a production oh, company, funny. this is Miss Money herself. Yes, I am Miss Money. And <laughs> congratulations, on, yes. All, yes. congratulations will... on all your awards. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> no, I, and I, full disclosure, Julie has a double, she was a New York actress and she was actually my daughter's theater teacher for many years over at Riverside, so she wears very multi-talented, um, and I and I have to say, I, I know how unbelievably talented you are, and the fact that you brought that piece of you into educating kids about financial literacy, I just think is so innovative and creative and valuable. So, you know. Major, major round of applause oh, thank for you. that. <laughs> I really, thank really you. do. It yeah. is a, a fun journey from having a BFA in musical theater to being a banker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll discuss that the next school. <laughs> On that note, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Just a note to self, Assistant Superintendent Sheehan, 40% participation. I wouldn't be satisfied with. We got to do better. Than that. that will be um, that will be noted. Good. Uh, next, we um, we have um, we are requesting approval of a field trip. Um, this is uh, submitted by field trip coordinator and uh, Middle Milton High School social studies teacher Kathleen Kelly. Um, the trip is not until April of 2017. Um, the preliminary approval um, was um, submitted to, um, was, was approved by uh, Mr. Jett. Um, Ms. Kelly um, is requesting final approval at this time so that students can make plans and save for the trip. Um, there still are some details that will need to be provided prior to the trip, so I'm not sure that, um, that you will decide to, to actually vote on file, final approval. Perhaps it would be subject to additional information that would come um, a little closer to the trip, but they were hoping for um, some, um, some support um, before they go forward with um, their savings and, and planning. Um, so um, in, in keeping with the, um, the um, policy for the uh, field trip final approval request, we have the um, coordinator here. Um, she has noted the destination would be Italy, Spain, and France. The exact dates are April 13th through April 23rd, 2017. Um, this uh, trip is planned through EF Tours, that's Education First Tours. Um, the um, coordinator provided a summary of the benefits to students and the rationale for the trip. Um, these trips are generally planned every two years um, um, at Milton High School. Um, the student group, again in accordance with the policy, the student group is named. This was open to all students. At this point, 40 students have signed up. Um, the um, the uh, chaperones are included here. Um, there will be three additional teachers besides Ms. Kelly, Ms. Troy, and Mr. Collier. Um, a detailed itinerary of the field trip has been included. Um, the um, exact names of the hotels, however, are not yet provided. Um, that will be provided three months prior to departure. There will be a tour guide through the tour company that will, um, um, that will meet the group upon arrival and remain um, with the students throughout the tour of, of um, these three countries. Um, the itinerary um, is included. Um, students will, um, will see um, Milan, um, Cinque Terre, Monaco, the French Riviera, Barcelona and Madrid. Um, a description of how the safety of students will be maintained is provided. Um, again, there's a tour guide. There is planned adult supervision. There will be a six to one ratio of students to chaperones. Um, chaperones um, um, are always teachers. It, it is noted here, I see it says they're always teachers because they know how to corral groups of students. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Um, there is a, um, a budget um, provided. Um, 
receipts and disbursements um, will be um, will be will be kept. But um, it should be noted that the trip cost of thirty-five hundred dollars per student is paid directly to EF Tours. Um, by um, taking reservations early, EF offered a three hundred dollars savings per student um, as a down payment for the trip, um, and they collected that in February. Um, and uh, the um, coordinator, Ms. Kelly, noted that this was a, uh, collectively a $12,000 savings to the students. Um, their, the fundraising is encouraged um, for individual students so that they, um, they uh, approach their um, relatives and family friends to support um, different, uh, different activities throughout the trip. So they have a plan in place um, to encourage students to do that. And as the time gets closer, um, then they determine whether or not they have to do additional fundraising. They have included in the, um, in the proposal um, additional information. Um, that information includes a promissory note that states that EF Tours will return um, the money to students, the deposit to students, um, if, the, if, if for some reason school committee does not support um, this field trip. Um, they, uh, uh, there are parent, copies of parent student contracts regarding discipline and behavior expectations on the trip included. Um, again, a list of students is provided, um, medical information forms, and emergency contact information as well. So this is what, um, what is being submitted thus far. Yes. Jones. Uh, here at the end. Um, I just had a couple of, uh, of questions. Um, first of all, I assume that EF Tours has been the tour guide for this program for years, or do you know? I believe they have worked with EF Tours, but I, I do know that this is a, a company that works with um, Primary Source, which is a um, professional development um, uh, company that, um, that the district works with. We um, we do a lot of professional development, and many of our educators have traveled through EF tours. In fact, I have personally. Okay. Um, EF tours. Also, maybe I'm, you know, not doing the math here correctly, but it says there's a six to one ratio for chaperones mm -hmm. to students, and that the, the chaperones have to be teachers, and there are only six teachers listed here, but 40 kids have already signed up. So I assume that more teachers are going to be added here. Or I believe there'll be oh. more, more teachers, or there could be parents. I, I know that I, I, I saw that you know they, they just plan to take teachers, but mm -hmm. um, there will be that ratio, so I think that there will be. All right, and, and my last question we, is... We will, we will check on that. Is um, in this... That is an inconsistency. Yeah. Um, in, this, um, in this trip, historically, has there ever been any... Have there ever been issues, whether they've been going with this travel company or others, issues with the kids, issues with the travel situation, issues that we should be concerned about on the school committee. I just don't know anything about it. I've, so, I'm not um, familiar with it. I would have to get back to you. I, it is my understanding that there have been some behavioral challenges in the past. Um, it is not um, most recently, not the most recent trips, but um, I did hear some discussion about um, about some uh, behaviors on, on one trip. Um, and uh, there are some guidelines for um, how that's handled with parents. Okay, thanks. Bailey Jones. Um, so I know we have a lot of other trips that go, I know we still have a Spain trip, correct? That goes, is this the most expensive trip, 3,500? I'm not, I'm not a, okay. you know, you might be talking about the trip um, that is organized by the uh, World Language Director, perhaps, because she tends to plan a trip on the off year, although there was not a trip oh, planned well, last year. Right, okay, so I know so, that there's yes. another trip. Yes. I was just wondering mm -hmm. about the cost, because yes. 3500 mm -hmm. seemed like a lot, even with the 300 mm -hmm. off, if you mm -hmm. had your act together to get that in early mm -hmm. enough. Um, so there isn't any group fundraising that you know of? It's all individual fundraising? That is, that is generally what has been the practice. Right. So 
And I know folks whose kids saved, you know, mowed lawns and saved to go mm -hmm. to Spain and, you know, mm -hmm. did a lot of work ahead of time and it's mm -hmm. great, it's ahead of time. It just feels like it's an awful lot of money mm -hmm. in terms of inclusiveness. Um, and I don't know if there's any group fundraising or anything that uh, could help with that because otherwise mm -hmm. it's a very limited group mm -hmm. who can afford to go even if they work a year ahead of time. So yeah, I, think, I think if Ms. Kelly were here, we did yep. have some discussion about that, that she would say that it's been her experience that um, parents who can afford to support this effort and have enough notice in advance um, see it as an opportunity for sending, you know, one Absolutely. child where a family may not be able yep. to afford mm -hmm. um, to travel together. And that um, she feels that um, giving enough notice allows any students who are able to work um, or again, f sort of fundraise on their own, um, mm -hmm. um, find supporters. Um, she feels that it's, it's adequate time for them to be able to save children of all income levels. That's, right. that, that's, that is what she shared with me. If I can just follow up with that, is that if there was a way to arrange some group fundraising just so that kids who don't have relatives that they can ask for money or families that can't afford this, it would be great to see team fundraising um, that would benefit, take the cost down for everybody, maybe. I don't know. That's just, I wouldn't mind you sharing that with Kay I'd Kelly. I'd be happy to do that. Ms. Varela. Um, I also wanted to know, too, is um, to piggyback on um, uh, what Elaine said, um, is, is it definitely capped at 40? Is it only going to be 40, or are they still opening it up to other students, or is there going to be a cap? Like, is it, would it... Could it not go beyond 75 students? Or I mean, just querying about that. I don't think 40 is a cap. I think that's the number they have now. Right I now, did see, I see. I did yeah. see in the packet a number of, um, you know, 46, 48. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just wondering. Okay. Dr. Donnie, I would, um, <clears throat> I would just remind, presuming that um, we give approval. I would remind the parents and guardians uh, of the opportunity to um, purchase travel insurance. Yes. Um, that, the, yeah, that's on the mm -hmm. penultimate page there. Yeah. That, given the state of world, world events, that might be money well spent. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big fan of international travel. I think it uh, broadens the horizons in a way that nothing else can. Um, I, I share the questions that uh, Dr. Craighead and Member Bagley Jones have raised. Uh, I think it's great to say um, we've got a, a real opportunity for all of you, um, except that only 40 people can go. Um, I think it's a problem for most families um, to say um, we got great news, uh, we've got a trip it's a once in a lifetime experience, but it's going to cost you $3,500. Um, even telling families that a year in advance, it doesn't make it that much easier. So um, I, I agree with Member Bagley Jones that it, it would be helpful, one, to make sure that we, this says it's open to all students, but then we say um, there's a six to one ratio. And as Dr. Craighead said, that right now that says we have 36 slots. So. We need more chaperones, but more importantly, I think if, if this really is open to all students, we should, just as we do in most other uh, ventures, try to make sure that, sure, everyone who wants to go should have to make some contribution, but mm -hmm. um, I, I, don't, I think we should find a way to make sure that students who could, in some ways, the students who could most benefit might not be able to afford. Mm -hmm. yeah. They might not have the opportunity in any other aspect of their life, whereas the students who are the first in line are probably the students who have already traveled internationally. So um, I'd, I'd like us to just revisit um, how this is, the framework, how this is constructed. Um, and may I ask, would that include the would that be to consider some group fundraising? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Great happenings.
So, so um, oh. I'm sorry, just to interject. Just just to be clear, are we are we tabling uh, approval of the final request until we circle back at a later point? We are. Okay, okay. just yeah. to, for clarity. Ms. Bagley Jones. What's the timeline on this? I'm I'm thinking the more time kids have to raise money. Mm -hmm. Right. So if it is tabled, when does it come back? Because the trip's next April? Mm-hmm. Yes. There's, okay, there's so it's under a year so, at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, um, Tim, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, I, I know, I mean, it's not expensive, but I know that, you know, um, my daughter goes on the music trips. I mean, those are only, you know, um, nationally to various states, but even that is usually about seven or eight hundred dollars, but they try they try to let them know, you know, say well well ahead of time and give them certain break up the payment dates so that, you know, you don't have to pay all at once and you same same kind of thing. So didn't know that if it's thirty five hundred and I know you said they already did a deposit, but maybe if you could ask Miss Kelly if um, she has sort of a timeline in mind of when the various payments might need to go and when is the last one and and that kind of thing just um yeah so we can either she can circle back at that information i don't know i mean something this massive too i, I um might be good for her to come to come to the meeting and speak instead of i mean no offense assistant superintendent she in, but you know she could really speak to every query i think that might be a bit more beneficial maybe her and the teachers <clears throat> But yeah. when is our next and, one? And she would be willing to do yeah, that. Yeah, I'm sure. I know her, so I'm sure she would be. Yeah. But when is our next meeting? Well, funny you should mention that. <laughs> um, only a few short items from now. We're going to talk about the July and August school committee meeting schedule. So okay. okay. I, have, I have a proposed answer. Can I just ask one question? How many of these trips have we had? How many of these types of trips over the years have we had in, with Milton High School students and approved in the past? Good amount. I think it's been <clears throat> okay. to remember. Okay. I joined the school committee in 2003, and we were right. doing them biannually at that point. Okay. So it's... So it's a pretty it's, regular... It's at least thing. 15 to 20 years. Okay. Okay. And then, Good to know. So it's a pretty regular thing that people are doing this on a regular basis. It is a basis. very regular thing. And the cost in reference to past trips that were of this extent is similar or not similar? I think it's higher. If you would... Well, like adjusting for inflation. Uh, of course, higher. inflation, right. Well, they, it's always right. been the most expensive right. field trip of the year for any reason. The and one always has. have we ever said no for a reason? I'm at wondering. We had discussion a lot okay. about the cost. But if I can just add yeah. to that, we also did something where we had the regular field trips that had already been approved, didn't have to come back here if they were the standard ones, that anything over a certain amount okay. or that was new would have to come. But the Spain trip is the one I remember as being the most expensive. This seems to me more expensive, and it's a new field trip. We haven't done this one before, correct? Well, the, this biannual one changes venue every year. If this this year it happens to be Italy and so forth, other okay. years it has been other places. Okay, so am I mixing as, this up with the Spain trip? Uh, no, per I, perhaps. I think Miss Kelly was involved with the Spain trip several years okay. ago, but there have also been trips through the world language mm -hmm. department okay. that are different. But, right. um, so perhaps when we come back, we could have a little field trip history information as well and i just think the biggest you know issue is the money this just stands out to me as a fairly large expense but we have had many in the past. okay i was just curious uh, you know i don't have a point of reference the board, i never we never participated in that so thank you we'll, we will make sure that we get back to and answer your questions Happiness. <laughs> So, Superintendent Gormley, um, we'd like all of our families to make sure to check the, the school's websites um, for important end-of-year activities. Um, there are concerts, field days, and grade five activities. Um, please also check the school websites for summer reading information. Um, prior to tonight's school committee meeting, we had um, a lovely reception um, in the library for this year's retirees. We would like to congratulate the following people. Claude Bird, Dr. Noreen Diamond Burdett, Kathleen Kakamo, Teresa Cunningham, John Desmond, Elizabeth McElhaney, Joanne Magliozzi, Helene Olkin, Stephen Scherer, 
Susan Smilek, Charles Tacey, Margaret Turner, and Lisa Tatunjan. We wish all of you a happy and healthy retirement. Um, next on Wednesday, June 22nd, we have the eighth grade social in the Pierce Middle School cafeteria. Um, on Thursday, June 23rd, um, we have our last day of school. That should be noted. It will be a half day for students. Um, on Saturday, June 25th, and Sunday, June 26th, um, we have the We Are Milton celebration um, with music and fireworks. And I think um, Dr. Pavlicek wanted to say a few words about the this event. This is now the fourth annual. Um, I begin Saturday afternoon with um, Hutchison Field on Adams Street with a collection of local groups, uh, members of the Milton artistic and musical communities performing uh, on the field and uh, ending the evening with an even larger display of fireworks than we've had in the past um, at just before 10 o'clock. Um, instead of one barge full of explosives, there will be two this year, so it's going to be uh, quite the event. And then on uh, Sunday afternoon, uh, we have a, a Celtic Sunday um, music starting at 11.30 in the morning, running till about 7.30 in the evening. Um, a variety of different groups, some local, some um, national, some one in from Ireland to play uh, a variety of music and uh, for the afternoon. So there will be food and uh, and the like available on the days. And, and it's uh, it's been a big uh, success over the last few years. Um, our platinum sponsor, of course, is the Copeland Family Foundation, who once again underwrites a significant portion of, uh, of the event. Okay. So, and also I understood that you were looking for a lot of volunteers for the bouncy houses, <laughs> um, both Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> were you going to ask for people to volunteer for that? Are you volunteering this? Seven, <laughs> seven people per hour both days are needed if anyone is wow. looking for anything to do. It's a big job. And, and who should they contact specifically? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have Okay, any, any bouncy house volunteers, please. I'll pass around the list. <laughs> we have a few more items. Please continue. So um, we'd also like families to make note that this year's Milton Summer Enrichment begins on June 27th and ends on July 29th. We've had a tremendous response to our Summer Enrichment Program. Um, also, uh, transportation registration is open until June 30th. Um, all registration information can be found on the Milton Public School website. Um, the registration for our kindergartners is ongoing as we have students in kindergarten who are still registering. Uh, parents and guardians should, um, around transportation issues should contact Jake Smith. He can be reached at um, bus at miltonps.org or um, um, another email address would be jsmith at miltonps.org. Um, he would be happy to answer any questions you have regarding transportation. Um, we would also um, like to um, have parents of rising 6th and 9th graders to note that um, they must reestablish residency um, as they prepare um, for their children to um, enter the next school year. Um, there is an abbreviated packet for this registration which can be found also on the Milton Public Schools website. Um, there was one more item that I meant to mention prior to happenings. Um, if I could do that, Please. Chairman Walker. Um, we have a, a, a memo here. Let's see. And uh, the um, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education um, recently communicated to um, um, all districts across the state um, a preliminary schedule for the release of all spring 2016 um, MCAS and PARC data. So the, um, the data will be released um, in, in, um, sort of, uh, periodically. Um, there will be preliminary data released. Um, um, the dates are given here on the schedule. Um, the first, um, the first um, data will be released um, July 11th. Um, 
individual student reports are going to be sent to districts. Um, this is for Park now uh, between August 11th and August 31st. So when school opens in September, we should have parent reports for Park to distribute. Um, the partial preliminary data for ELA math and um, science, technology, and engineering, MCAS, um, will be released um, June 28th, and then the full preliminary data will be available on August 10th. Um, the, um, all of this data is embargoed until we hear otherwise from um, the department. Um, the um, participation rates um, will be embargoed until mid-August. Um, in mid-September, we expect to be able to share that data with the public. Just going back to the re-registration, I'm not sure if everybody's clear, it would be a good time to remind them that we do this because of our residency requirements and write its entry, then grade six, going into grade six and going into grade nine. And that it's due to residency concerns that citizens have had in the past and this is the school system's way of ensuring that um, people are registering live in Milton. And I think it's important for people to know that that's why they have to re-register their children. Is that it? That, that concludes the afternoons. Thank, Thank you. So first on the chair's report is a resolution on, resolution on charter school ballot initiative. Um, this was actually brought to our attention by Dr. Craighead and then uh, she and I worked on the language that you look at in just a minute, but if, if you would, Dr. Craighead, do you want to say a few words about how this came to your attention? Um, sure. The, uh, there will be a, ba a question on the ballot in November regarding lifting the cap on charter schools. And um, the, uh, the question, um, the, it's, this is a proposal by um, Governor Baker, supported by Governor Baker, that um, would lift the, the cap on charter schools by 12 per year. So that would mean that every year, 12 more charter schools could be um, built uh, up and running in Massachusetts every year. 12 one year, then 12 the next, then 12 the next. And you could have, after 12 years, 144 charter schools. Charter schools right now in Massachusetts are uh, taking over $400 million away from public schools, over $400 million. In, in Milton, um, we are uh, losing $100,000 a year right now, which doesn't sound like a whole lot of money, I suppose, but we on the school committee know absolutely what we could do with $100,000. Um, when charter schools are built, they don't have to be approved by the town. Uh, there have been several cases in Massachusetts where charter schools were established uh, against the wishes uh, of a town. They can go anywhere. Um, uh, what else did I want to say? Um, the teachers of charter schools do not have to be licensed, unlike the teachers in uh, public school systems. And there have been um, a number of um, assertions of uh, ways in which uh, I won't get specific, but ways in which charter schools have been said to push out students who are problematic so that they can up their numbers and look a lot better and then push, um, push those students that may be um, issue, of issue to them into the public school system. Um, so charter schools uh, definitely have issues and this particular uh, proposal uh, this ballot question uh, would just exacerbate in a huge way uh, the problems that we're already seeing in the Commonwealth. Thank you. So the, the uh, proposed resolution that is um, submitted for your approval uh, includes language that says that um, we don't support the upcoming ballot initiative and that uh, we recommend a no vote. Uh, but I also talked with uh, the Mass Association of School Committees and um, their position is that before we support any legislation that would increase the number of charter schools, that there are a number of key um, legislative initiatives that uh, we think and they think should precede that, um, including 
um, requiring the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education to consider the social and economic impact upon the districts from which the new or expanding charter schools would recruit students. Uh, second, that any legislation, reform legislation for charter schools should require a strong provision to prevent uh, skimming and suspensions from charter schools that return students um, whom they no longer wish to enroll to the sending districts. And then um, third, this is actually a correction, should read reform financing so that charter school expropriations from local chapter 70 funding does not severely damage the sending districts. Uh, next, require timely reporting on accountability with meaningful data on student attendance, expulsions, and suspensions. Uh, next, establish benchmarks to measure success. And then finally, require on an annual basis the reporting of best practices and innovation to the sending school districts. So, can I, say, can I say one last thing yeah. that I forgot to say? There are 50 school districts in the Commonwealth that have already taken a stance on this. School committees have, have made it clear what their the, uh, negative stance on um, raising the cap on charter schools. And 27 school committees have passed some form of a re resolution against this, just so you know. It, this is not, um, we wouldn't be the first. Mm -hmm. Dr. Pavlicek. Um, two quick points to follow up on that, just so you um, get a little background. Um, we do lose about $100,000 a year in charter schools. The way the reimbursement works, if you think about it, if we get $10,000 a year in Chapter 78 and one of those students goes to a charter school, um, they don't get $10,000 from us. They get more like $20,000 from us um, because they get the full cost of the, uh, the, ed the education of that student. So we actually lose more to a charter school per student than we gain mm. in our chapter 78. Mm. So that's part of the reason for the cost. Uh, the reason we only lose $100,000 a year is we have a, a fairly small number of students who go to charter schools, mm. it's five currently. But it's, uh, mm. uh, it is still a, a you, you can imagine if you had a few more students who went to say a char charter school in Boston, um, what the, the impact would be on that. And you might also have noticed the, the Department of Ed did a, a study, uh, did a release of information on suspensions and expulsions mm. the other day. And um, the vast majority of the flagrant offenders of suspensions and expulsions of students are charter schools. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I move that we uh, approve the resolution before us with the Noted modification on the third bullet. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I just have a, another querying question, and maybe um, Dr. Craighart could answer it. Um, I I was I was querying some colleagues who live in this um, who live in the city um, because there's so many more charter schools there about this. And another thing that she brought to my attention was that her nephew was attending. Um, a public school in Dorchester that was under underperforming, and that sometimes um, she also said that when when public schools are underperforming, that some of them are turning then into a charter school, which I which was which was also a weird situation that I had never heard about before, and um, because because if it can be turned into a charter school, then the public school doesn't have to account for, um, you know, the low the low testing scores and in that kind of stuff. So that statistically, you know, it, it's one. Again, it's another thing you kind of brush underneath the rug. Um, I don't know if it, if you had heard of that or uh, news, news to me. I mean, she said that 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 it happened to. I forget when, exactly which school it was, but that's sort of another thing that having the ability to have it is. Um, I was dismayed to hear that information. Um, uh, I think I'm just not going to, I'm, I'm not, not gonna really going to comment okay. on that. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. somebody else would like to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. On the motion, all in favor? It's unanimous, Moore. Thank you. Okay. So, we do have business to conduct that will um, go on through the summer. So I talked with 
and Dr. Donahue and with the superintendent and her leadership team to try to see uh, what a reasonable summer schedule might be. And, and this is the proposal that I think would meet our needs but not be too onerous for uh, a summer schedule. So what's proposed is that we meet on June 29th, July 27th, August 10th, and we had already scheduled August 22nd for our retreat. And um, the memo says that the time for the retreat will be determined, but we already determined it's four to eight on the 22nd. So the motion is that we approve this as our summer schedule. Second. Moved and seconded discussion, Ms. Varela. Um, I, you know, I, I can approve it, but I, I am away on vacation one of the weeks. I just won't be able to do it the meeting. So. so I anticipated that yeah. that might be the case. I, I'd like to have five of six at least. Um, yeah, I won't be able to be here on the July 7th meeting. I mean, 27th. Mm -hmm. And I won't be the June 29th. Okay, what I would suggest is that we approve this schedule. I'll, I'll take one more crack at um, having Charlene talk to each of you to see if there is, in fact, um, a date in. It would probably wouldn't be June. It would probably be early July and, and late July. That might work for everyone. Um, it might mean we might have to meet on a day other than Wednesday. So we'll take one more crack at that, but I'd, I'd like to tentatively approve this schedule for now. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So moved and seconded on the motion. All in favor? It's unanimous with the understanding that we'll take one more crack at having a date when all six of us can be here. Thank you. Uh, so the, the last item is the athletic director and director of K-12 phys ed slash health screening committees. Um, normally, school committee members don't sit on unit B. These are both unit B positions uh, on unit B screening committees. But we have set something of a precedent with the athletic director screening committees. So uh, if anyone is interested, and this is your opportunity to say so, uh, we have Bagley Jones. For well, are they two different screening yeah. committees? Yes, okay, they are. because okay, so I would sit. Uh, I'd like to sit on the athletic directors one. Okay, Ms. Varela. I would like to sit on the athletic directors one too. You don't want to do the PE. When is the PE going to be? Well, it doesn't matter. There can mm -hmm. be two of us on it, but. So, athletic director. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, finance subcommittee report. We're now up and running. We had our first uh, real meeting, and we're off to a great start. Um, approval of vendor warrants, Dr. Pavlicek. Amount and date. I believe we have counting tonight. Four of them to approve. Four of them. Can I just ask a question first yes. before you do that? So on the finance subcommittee meeting, um, are you guys going to have minutes? Because if you can't yes. be at the meeting, it would be great to be able to read the minutes. Yes. Okay. Um, so we have four. I believe. I'm sure hoping that we have enough people who have signed them that uh, I was ready to vote on the one I signed this morning. But okay. Well, let's uh, start at the beginning. The oldest one, I believe, that we haven't actually voted was number 47. 47. Which was May 19th. I think we put it off at the last meeting in May. Um, and that was uh, $420,986.15. Okay. 48. Um, number, 
as you know, we're getting to the end of the year, so we've been doing these pretty much once a week. You know, because we've been calling you. Um, number 48, which was May 26th, was $296,401.55. Number 49, which was on June 2nd, was $636,000. $249.84. And tonight's number 51 is $602,367.34. And it's dated 619. 44 cents? 34 cents. Six. Six oh two. Dated. Um, June nineteenth. That's what I thought you said. Yes. It's not even. It's not June nineteenth yet. No, they're dated Thursdays, generally. But that's in the future. Yes, they always are. You vote the night before because they don't. That's they're dated the day they go to the to treasurer so to be check, it, checks run. Wouldn't that be six sixteen? Well, it should be, except it says six nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with six sixteen. <laughs> All right, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna do these um, as an omnibus motion unless there's an objection. There is none. Uh, move to approve warrant num vendor warrant number 47 in the amount of four hundred twenty thousand nine hundred eighty-six dollars and fifteen cents, dated May nineteenth. Vendor warrant number 48 in the amount of two hundred ninety-six thousand four hundred one dollars and fifty-five cents, dated May twenty-sixth. Uh, vendor warrant 49 in the amount of $636,249.84, dated June 2nd. And vendor warrant number 51 in the amount of $602,367.34, dated 616. Second. Moved by Walker, seconded by Varela. Um, any discussion? Mm -hmm. On the motion, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. We have no old business next meeting agenda items. Are you doing transportation? You skipped. Well, well, number skip. seven. Numbers. Oh. oh sorry. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> I just um, I just want you to see I had so many so many things marked up that I. There you go. Um, I'll be brief. Um, so just to give you a quick summary uh, on what's going on with transportation. Um, I think Superintendent Gormley mentioned it, but I will um, speak to it again. But we were nominated by uh, Massachusetts Department of Transportation for the, um, the Safe Routes to School Community Collaboration Award. Nice. And we actually won our town. Nice. For all the work that we have been doing. <laughs> wow. Uh, collaboratively. And That's um, great. the improvements that we're trying to make uh, working with um, the police department, at DPW, nice. and um, and my update on one of our new collaborators, um, the chair of the town bicycle advisory committee has reached out to us nice. to, yes, to work together. Um, uh, <clears throat> they they kind of want to piggyback on sort of the safe routes uh, school maps that uh, we had we worked on and implemented last year. Um, to see how we can continue to collaborate because of all the new bike paths that are being done. So DPW, of course, plays a role in that as well. So at our July meeting, we're having um, Joe Lynch, the chair of the Bicycle Advisory Committee, come and we're gonna, we're gonna powwow some ideas of what their needs are, what we, how we can help, what we can do to work um, together on that. And also, I think, bring them up to speed a little bit more on like what we're doing as far as bicycle safety, because you know, we've done the bicycle safety seminars. Um, both at the middle and the education, um, I'm the education, the elementary school level. So, um, so that that's happening. We've established um, starting in the school year that again every Wednesday is walk and bike to school day, with the first Wednesday of every month um, being Prize Day for those kids who who to do that. We've reached out to the PTOs to um, MassDOT has been great about providing. Um, sort of fun charge key prizes, um, you know, on those days, but reaching out to the PTOs to maybe um, give a little bit more of a um, <clears throat> incentive type of prize. So we're gonna powwow with that um, to see what we can come up with. 
Uh, we, we do have some people who are moving on to other schools, like some clever parents moving up to Pierce and that kind of thing. So we are getting a couple of new um, reps from each school on the transportation committee for next year. Uh, they should be coming in hopefully to the July meeting or at least August, you know, to get up and running. Um, and we, I have also asked the PTOs to put in place and reach out, especially the elementary level, because they do so much of their um, agenda preparation over the summer um, to ensure that they have a uh, walk to school representative or team. You know, I always encourage everyone to have teams so no one feels well, so overwhelmed. So, you know, the walk to school rep is a different, you know, sort of a different responsibility and role. They work with the transportation rep from the school. So the, all of those things are being put in place. Um, also, too, I just kind of, for those people watching, that the safe routes to schools that we did last summer and early fall with the chief and um, our mass dot representative, um, they've all been placed on each school's website. So for new parents who might be starting at all the new schools and want to walk, you know, on those nice months, um, those safe those safe routes to school um, recommended best routes, mm. you know, walking routes to your school are listed on each one of the nice. um, school's websites. So just was ensuring, I um, want to give a shout out to Jake Smith, who we, I work with um, diligently and, and um, ask him to do all of this, you know, execute all of these things that um, we, we come up with at the meeting. So um, those are a couple of things that we have on the agenda. And then, then the other thing that most recently happened is that we had a visit <clears throat> from Lieutenant Mark Alba from the Milton Police Department has also been a great partner with us on this transportation committee um, to give us an update on school crossing guard situations. So um, mm. unfortunately, there's been a lot of turnover with the crossing guards um, this past year and they're revamping, um, they're kind of revamping their outreach to um, for new hires. You know, it's, mm. it's kind of a tough thing. You have to be available in the morning and the night, but they're reaching out um, to, um, you know, different organizations in town to kind of market it. Um, and, and they're also putting it out on various websites. And they're also putting into place, which they didn't have um, a diligent and thorough um, kind of substitution uh, pool. You, you know, you kind of need that like you do for schools because that's what was happening, mm -hmm. that they would have four crossing guards out in one day. And they can't use the only so, so many patrol, you know, personnel they can use to cover that. So. Um, you know, he sort of came and presented that, and many of the reps um, from the various schools also just FYI'd him and queried him um, about different concerns and situations. So um, it was a really good meeting, and he continues to be um, a great support um, to the to the committee. So all in all, we're moving forward and looking forward to the school year mm -hmm. ahead. And and also, we have a reception at the state house to receive our award. Um, That's great. Wednesday morning, um, the Wednesday of June. Actually, I think I, I'll be away, but we, we are having all of the parents who are part of the transportation committee, um, along with any administration that want to go and receive the award, um, including our director of transportation, to receive it. So I won't be there, but we'll have a nice showing, and it's a great reception. And I'm really proud of proud of um, all the parents, and they, they really do, you know, they really do take it seriously and bring innovative and thoughtful recommendations to the committee. So um, kudos to them. Yeah. Ms. Bagley Jones. So I have to say, I don't know for those of you who weren't on the committee, this committee came up when there was quite a lot of discussion uh, on Milton Neighbors and on other places about the safety and the cost of the bus and how it was all connected. Anyway, there was a lot of talk on the streets about this, and the Transportation Committee came out of that in trying to explain the past history, uh, the cost of the bus, the reason there were less buses, and parents were quite upset, so a Transportation Committee was born, which I was on for a little bit of time, and then said, you know, Ms. Sheila can take my place. And I am so impressed with how far it has come. Because when it first started, it was like, okay, well, we have a lot of unhappy people. What are we going to do about a bad situation? What do you think? And it has grown and really become a very active committee. Um, I'm quite impressed. And you got the award. Mm -hmm. And I gave you somebody from the health fair that, the health committee that uh, has helped you. 
Janine or whatever. From, Jane, yeah, yeah, she she's was our, on the health and she's wellness. Our Say she's, go to them. Yeah, she's really so she's been yeah, really, helpful. She's really helpful. My one question, or maybe you could just verify this, is that the crossing guards are not paid for or hired by the school district. Correct. They're hired by the police, mm -hmm. so the schools have nothing to right, do right. But with the crossing guards. Right. That, exactly. Right. That's right. Okay. And that's good for the viewing audience to know it doesn't come out of our budget. But, but it's really. I mean, that's why you know uh, former Chief Wells and and I know our new Chief um, Chief King and and again Lieutenant Alba um, will be good partners with us. They'll be because. They're, you know, they're in charge of them, but they do have, they do work closely with, um, and you know, Glenn is our superintendent on it, who takes care of a lot of, you know, um, transportation issues as well. That they're in, um, you know, constant communication with one another. What are the concerns? What are the needs? Where are the improvements? Um, you know, it, it, it's really, really good teamwork between uh, the public schools and the police department, and then also some of the crossing guards on um, Blue Hill Parkway, which is. Um, Owned and main, not owned, but maintained by DCR. Mm -hmm. They're funded there, so there's a little bit of funding there. But then again, our Milton police are in constant contact with them too about okay. issues. So it's it's a little bit of every, you know, it's a, it's mm -hmm. very much a collaborative effort effort to ensure that that's a well. That right now there was a little shaky that it wasn't a well oiled machine, but we're they're revamping <laughs> and you know making improvements. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, good work. Good. I will say I will say that. The, you know, which is something else that we'll speak at another day, but uh, it's something we have to work on in the budget in the school when we do contingent, non contingent. But the fees are still a concern and still an issue that's brought up, and it's not something that we can fix right now. But uh, we're doing a lot of good work, but that's something that, you know, will come out of another pocket that we do have to investigate. That is still, it's still a concern, the cost of it for a lot of parents in town. So, anyway. Nice. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Continuing to write Milton School Committee history. I don't think a school committee subcommittee has ever won an award. So. <laughs> and first mother and daughter to serve on the school committee at the same time. Mm -hmm. Grace hasn't been here. She's she got a job tutoring French on Wednesday nights <laughs> at the end of the year. So she said it's the only night they'll take her. So mm -hmm. no, she's enjoyed it. It's great. So next meeting agenda items. I have one. Um, member Varela had suggested that we uh, try to do a tutorial on Robert's Rules of Order. Um, I talked with MASC. They're willing to do actually a package of uh, a discussion about Robert's Rules, um, ethics, and conflict of interest issues for school committee members. Um, so the question is how many of you would be interested in that? and should we look for a date in July or August, or should we wait until the fall? Could it be part of the retreat? No. Why? Not enough time. How much time is it going to take? He said it could be as short or as long as we want, but I'm guessing maybe an hour. Okay. We've, we've been doing pretty well with our meetings. Yeah. Could we add it into a meeting where there isn't a lot on the agenda? No. Because? I, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a agenda item, mm -hmm. school if, committee agenda item. Um, what if, can I recommend, um, if, it, if we do do it in an hour, could we do it, um, over, if we do it over the summer at one of the summer meetings, could we do it like the six, the six o'clock time slot beforehand? That's could what I that. meant. Yeah. 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 That'd be a good idea. That's not, you know, like we do right. sub-policy subcommittee. Yeah. yeah. That's what I meant, before um, yeah. or after the meeting. Yes. I prefer for before because my brain is a little right. clearer. Mm -hmm. So um, that is dependent on whether the uh, proposed facilitator is available. Mm -hmm. So we'll try to work that out. But yes, okay. that, that certainly could be a, yeah. a good way to handle it. Yeah, and thank you for that. I, you know, I, I think it'll be good. Okay. Anyone for citizen speak once again? David, do you have any anything? Any questions? No. Okay. Um, entertain a motion to um, go into executive session for the purpose of discussing um, the MOU with the Milton Police Department and negotiation strategy for non-union personnel 
the discussion of which um, in public sessions might compromise our negotiating positions. Um, this is a roll call vote. Ms. Varela? Yes. Ms. Bagley Jones? Yes. Dr. Donahue? Yes. Ms. Everhart? Dr. Craighead? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes.